Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to start by saying that the, the work of Scotland's local authorities is central uh, to growing our economy in a way that will benefit people uh, living in every community and help to address, as we've heard, the climate emergency. And the Scottish Government is focused on enabling a fairer society and we want Scotland to be a place where prosperity is shared more equally across our regions and the local places. Our natural environment is protected and managed sustainably and strong economic growth uh, and performance is the servant of all. Local or national government will not uh, do what we need to do alone. Uh, it will take the public, the private and the third sector uh, working in common purpose to ensure our economy remains strong and that future society is cohesive but also resilient. And that collaborative spirit is essential as we deal with COVID-19. And while we are pleased to see the UK uh, government's economic response in the budget, we need confirmation on what it will mean for Scotland. And we will ensure that Barnet consequentials for business are passed on to business. And we know that retail, hospitality and tourism are all facing immediate pressures. So we'll ensure that business in Scotland are supported. Uh, we will work with the business community to identify the most effective measures uh, available to us. I chaired a meeting with representatives from Scotland's uh, business uh, support organisations and the SDUC and Slade this week to hear their concerns and provide reassurance that the Scottish Government will do everything in our power to protect the workforce, businesses and our economy. We all agreed that we need to have a collective response, embracing a sensible fair work principled approach, uh, building in resilience both for individuals but also for businesses. Today we have launched a business helpline uh, as we know businesses will face a tough time ahead. We'll work with the banks uh, to encourage them to address cash flow liquidity issues, but we also need to think now and prepare for uh, a recovery, uh, economic recovery plan. Looking further ahead, maintenance of what is a strong economy uh, is not an end uh, in itself, our approach is that we want to maintain a strong, productive, innovative economy to support investment in our vital public services and the well-being of our people and our communities. And many of you here will be involved in planning and delivering activity that helps business to form and grow, helps people access training and employment, or, or perhaps steers the, some of the new transformational investment through those city, region and growth deals to boost uh, local and regional economies. And from reviewing Slade's uh, Indicators Framework uh, report for 2018-19, published in January, it's clear that local authorities are delivering real benefit to individuals, businesses and communities. For example, there's £555 million invested in economic development and tourism activity, 21,531 instances of business support over and above business gateway services and over 43,000 participants in council run or operated employability activities with over 15,000 from this number progressing into employment. So the contribution made by local government to inclusive and sustainable growth is much wider than its direct economic development activity. So as Cabinet Secretary for Culture, I launched a culture strategy for Scotland on the 20th of February, and that strategy highlights the contribution uh, made by creative people to both local and national economies. And the assets um, of local authorities and the services you provide support the culture sector to play a vital role in local economies. So let's continue to nurture the creative industries uh, in partnership. And I want to turn now to what the Scottish Government is doing to enable a more inclusive uh, low carbon economy. The central aim of all our economic actions is to drive prosperity that serves all and the national performance uh, indicators, uh, those 11 national outcomes that improve the quality of life for the people of Scotland. A focus on that inclusive and sustainable economic growth enables us to consider outcomes across a broader range of criteria to allow a rounded assessment of the quality of our economic system and the distribution of economic opportunities across uh, Scotland's people and places. So we revised our um, economic action plan that was launched on the 22nd of January 
and it focuses on enabling uh, uh, the opportunities to build competitive and productive business environment, that highly skilled workforce, and action to benefit every business and individual in Scotland. As you will be aware, Scotland's enterprise and skills system is modernising to ensure that the Scottish Government, its agencies and our partners in the public and private sectors collaborate more uh, effectively. The work is led by the Enterprise and Skills Strategic Board um, and there are productive relationships between business, local government and Scottish Enterprise, Highlands and Islands Enterprise, Skills Development Scotland and the Scottish Funding Council and soon the South of Scotland and Enterprise. And they're all crucial if we're going to maximise the assets of both people and place. Business Gateway, Highlands Isles Enterprise, Scottish Enterprise and Skills Development Scotland are continuing <coughs> to co-develop that single entry point now available to access at findbusinesssupport.gov.uk. And that means businesses can quickly and easily access products and services, including a national inquiries and signposting service. So that's a, a great example of collaboration that is actually focused by, for the user and businesses themselves. So what Scotland needs is a whole system approach, uh, a commitment to inclusive growth with all parts of the Scottish Government working with local government and uh, agencies and others to strengthen the economy and importantly enhance the well-being of every citizen and community. And this approach has evolved further um, as is often described as the economy of well-being or the well-being economy bringing together that economic, societal and environmental uh, well-being together under a consistent framework. And place is central to this. And Gary Gillespie, uh, the chief economist, will pick up on this theme um, on the Wellbeing Economy Governance Initiative. I understand he might be speaking uh, later on today. Encouraging public sector partners to address economic uh, development through the prism of place, specifically uh, our regions and their local places, underpins the developments, as we've heard uh, in the introductory remarks, of the regional economic partnerships. And it's local authorities who are leading development of these partnerships prompted by the Enterprise and Skills Review and building on the governance foundations laid by the city region and growth deals to which the Scottish Government has already committed over £1.8 billion over the next 10 to 15 years. So I'd like to thank you for your work to develop these regional partnerships. Um, I want the Scottish Government and the Enterprise and Skills Agencies to provide the support that you need to make these partnerships thrive and realise tangible benefit for communities in the form of business growth and the availability of new and high quality jobs. At a sub-regional level, we're working with local government and others to support a wide range of ambitious place-led and place-based economic collaboration projects. For example, the former Michelin site in Dundee will be transformed into an incubator for new industrial innovation. Our developing work on the Clyde mission has a strong place-based focus and will seek to address long-standing problems of, pro of poverty and dereliction of space. Since 2014, working with COSLA, we've agreed more than £160 million in grant offer recommendations to the Regeneration Capital Grant Fund. I think there are brilliant projects as part of that that I've seen, and they aim to transform, to inspire, and regenerate our places and spaces delivered by communities themselves. That fits very much with the Infrastructure Commission's proposal for re reuse and repurposing of existing spaces. We've established the £50 million Capital Town Centre Fund in 1920, and local authorities are working with partners and communities on a number of projects that are benefiting town centres. And inspired by the Ayrshire Growth Deal, um, the Scottish Government is also promoting a new community wealth building uh, model. And this model of economic development seeks to encourage large public and private sector anchor organisations to procure and recruit as much as possible from local businesses and communities respectively. So I know there's a great deal of interest in this model across Scotland's local authorities and it's an area of work in which the leadership role of local authorities will be pivotal. So all of this place-focused uh, activity is informed by our collective embrace of the place principle uh, adopted by the Scottish Government and COSLA. So together we must be alive to the challenges and opportunities in every place in Scotland. Scotland's population is ageing, with a shift in population from the west to the east and declining population in rural and island areas. Uh, not all of them, but some of them. 
Population growth over the next 25 years will be driven by migration, including from the rest of the UK. So we need to grow our population to ensure we have sustainable communities and continued availability to labour is essential to boost our economy, address potential skill shortages in all sectors of the labour market. And we're working with colleagues in local authorities and other partners to reform employability support in Scotland, as set out in No One Left Behind, our action plan for more effective and joined up employability for individuals furthest from the labour market. Our joint partnership with local government uh, encompassing both national leadership and local action is detailed in the shared joint Scottish and local government employability action plan and that was published in February. And we must build on the pr principles underpinning Fair Start Scotland, and that's our national devolved employment support service which will be entering its third year of operation in April. And it is playing a significant part in helping people into and towards work with nine out of 10 people surveyed who used the service, feeling that they were treated with dignity and respect, while more than three quarters felt they had a choice about the type of support they received. Fair Work First is a flagship policy for the Scottish Government within our Work Action Plan. And it aims to drive fairer work practices across the labour market by attracting fair work criteria to grants, other funding streams, and contracts awarded by and across the public sector. So building on early adopter activities by the Enterprise and Skills Agencies in 1920, all public bodies are being asked to adopt the terms of the Scottish Government's Fair Work Agreement. Through Skills Development Scotland, we've developed a suite of regional skills assessments and sectoral skills assessments investment plans to support the development of Scotland's uh, workforce in line with employer and geographical demand. And the work to align the skills system in Scotland is one of the main actions set out in Scotland's Future Skills Action Plan, and that plan will set out our ambition for a more flexible skills system that can respond at uh, pace to business needs and a changing labour market, and that's going to be critically important um, in that shift and that transition as we move and respond to some of the challenges that lie ahead. Being agile is going to be critical to our skills system, and it is uh, clear that local authority involvement is a golden thread running through all of this work. Scotland is best served by local government and the Scottish Government working together to maximise opportunities and to tackle common challenges. Now, in, in terms of our economic performance, um, our economic performance has remained resilient despite a more challenging backdrop with the prolonged Brexit uncertainty and weaker global economic environment through 2019. Uh, despite this, there are encouraging trends, but I would caution these figures and this information is pre-COVID-19. But to give you some insight, Scotland's labour market continues to perform strongly compared to historic records, near record low levels of unemployment, higher levels of employment, and they've continued to increase. We've also continued to increase our relative productivity performance compared to the UK, but there's more to do in that area. Export data from HMRC shows Scottish exports of goods increased by 11.3% in the year ending September 2019. Now, that's faster than any other... UK nation and the latest Scottish Development uh, International data shows that more than 10,000 jobs have been created or safeguarded by foreign direct investment into Scotland in 1819 and that's an increase of 18% uh, compared to the year before. But we want to do even better, uh, that's why uh, our Trading Nation Export Growth Plan sets an ambitious target of increasing international exports from 20% to 25% of GDP over the next 10 years. Further, the National Manufacturing Institute uh, Scotland is an integral part of our vision to make Scotland a global leader in advanced manufacturing, and I've already had a visit to that site. I hope that I've given you a flavour of the integrated Scottish Government's actions to develop our economy. However, we know that local and national government must adapt to the challenges ahead, including the exit from the European Union that Scotland didn't vote for. As a result of Brexit, Scotland will no longer be able to access support from European structural funds, which have played such a significant role in developing Scotland's economy for many years. And the loss of such funding will have a significant impact on the ability of local authorities, funding bodies and enterprise agencies to deliver services and infrastructure initiatives that support Scotland's economy. 
So it's essential that Scotland is in a strong position to receive at least the same level of funding through the UK government's proposed replacement funding vehicle, the Shared <coughs> Prosperity Fund. And despite the Scottish Government pressing the UK for more, a more meaningful role in the development of that Shared Prosperity Fund, this hasn't, has not happened, and to date there's a little further detail uh, on the fund that's been communicated to us. That's why the Scottish Government has recently undertaken a consultation on the replacement of the European Structural Funds post-EU exit. That was launched on the 5th of November, it closed on the 12th of February this year, and a report with recommendations will now be prepared for Cabinet and any replacement scheme should be operational in time for implementation in early 2021 to minimise those funding gaps um, impacting on stakeholders. The theme of today's uh, conference plays equal weight on inclusive growth and sustainability. I think that's entirely correct. Uh, in response to the Paris Agreement, our landmark, our landmark Climate Change Act uh, maintains our legislative framework as the most ambitious in the world. Our transition to net zero we will be just and fair to everyone. We've established a joint, a, a, sorry, a just transition commission uh, to provide ministers with practical advice on how to maximise the economic and social benefits of decarbonising Scotland and to manage the risks and challenges. So we're updating the climate change plan. We're looking across all our responsibilities in government to make sure we continue with policies that are working, identify areas where we can go further and faster. And as part of the 2019 programme for government commitment, Skills Development Scotland and the Scottish Funding Council will develop and publish a climate emergency skills action plan by September 2020. In addition, the Green Growth Accelerator was launched as part of a package of green finance measures, also in the 2019 programme for government. And we'll work with COSLA, local authorities, and local economic delivery partners across Scotland to support that transition to uh, a low carbon uh, economy. So Scotland has a huge economic potential. We've got great strength uh, in depth and range in terms of our activity. We want to take uh, advantage of the economic opportunities that come from those established strengths, that innovative spirit and the embrace of technological change. And we also have to be resilient in tough times that lie ahead and prepare for recovery as we emerge through COVID-19. So let's national and Scottish, uh, the Scottish Government nationally, uh, working together with local government, continue uh, that partnership to access new opportunities that can grow Scotland's economy by promoting productivity, inclusivity and sustainability. And then the objective for all of us must, to be, must be to, to build uh, a country that is resilient that has the well-being of our people and the protection of the wider world uh, at its heart. And I'm sure with the talent in this room, uh, also working, uh, I think, with the partners we have across Scotland in, in uh, different areas, uh, whether it's enterprise, whether it's skills, uh, whether it's north, south, east, west, islands, rural, city, urban, semi-rural, etc. Uh, we have very talented people, we've got capabilities. Uh, and I think if we focus ourselves, uh, we can be a country that people want to learn from, come to, preferably live, work, invest and move to. And I think that is the vision that we collectively can all work towards. Thank you.